Well, welcome everybody. I was at Sierra Nevada last week, uh, hanging out with Scott and the other brewers and Charlie Bamsport. And we got to talking about one of Sierra's newest beers, which is the Oktoberfest. And I haven't actually had it yet. Scott was telling me there's quite a backstory and we ought to get Ollie on the phone. So Ollie is actually, and I said, follow him, camera, we appreciate you being online. Ollie's super busy. Scott is super busy. We're cramming it in right quick, but you're going to get the story right quick. And Ollie, I haven't talked to you in quite a while. Scott's endured me already uh, for the past few days. I want to hear the backstory on the Oktoberfest from you, if you don't mind. Thanks for inviting us. So I use this actually for an excuse to, well, if, if a brewer needs an excuse. So um, I'll have a Oktoberfest on hand uh, right away, guys. Um, so yeah, uh, our mutual history actually goes back to the year 2000 when Scott and I were both studying brewing science um, at the VLB in Berlin. That's where we met for the first time. And then um, after studying, we went our, well, brewing ways, kind of lost track and uh, re met in, Scott helped me out there. It must have been 2009, I guess, um, when I visited Sierra Nevada. Yeah. yeah. Around there, okay. just <laughs> randomly in the no, hallway. It actually was in the pilot plant. Uh, <laughs> Ken, Ken toured me around, and you you were brewing, and he was like, yeah, okay, this is our pilot plant, that's our pilot brewer, Scott Jennings. I was like, hey, I know you. Um, and since <laughs> that, we have been doing a, a lot of things together, um, visiting each other, brewing together. Uh, before I went back to start Kevita in Hamburg, I actually interned at Scott um, at Sierra Nevada, um, worked there a little bit, and as the first batch that we brewed on our brew house that we have here in Hamburg um, was with Scott, was in a, called an old school um, IPA. Um, and as far as I remember, that was the first collaboration brew that Sierra ever brewed in Germany. I think that was the old first school? official. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. This one? Oh. <laughs> cool. Um, uh, we have been, um, I think, the only German brewer, regrettably, to be part of that resilience project after the campfire. Um, and um, yeah, so we have a very, very long history um, being friends. And um, so when Sierra asked us to be their Oktoberfest collaboration partner for this year, of course, we were super excited and happy. And um, so Scott and I sat down to talk about the recipes and well if you look at, at, at an Oktoberfest beer well traditionally well it's a fest beer so we're talking about someone the 13 plate of range um you know like golden dark a golden rich color but not too dark and so yeah there you go like like that one <laughs> so we were like hey look both our flagship beers are in that range pale ale 30 plate of beer and prototype which takes its inspiration from pale ale but it's just the uh, lager interpretation of that one is also a 13 plate of beer so we said well let's melt these two recipes and ideas behind it together um, and create a well wonderful modern interpretation of a classic beer style uh, um, the fest beer or Oktoberfest beer um, yeah, and I think it worked out pretty well. Yeah, it's it's quite pale, but not not as as light in color as many of the modern fest beers. It does have a little bit of a a deeper yeah, golden cool. to it. Uh, some of the modern fest beers yeah. are very pale in color and uh, very uh, uh, low in, in hop character. So. Since neither of us, I don't think, make anything that's low in hop character, <laughs> we wanted to uh, to really uh, uh, put a lot of hops in it. So we got Cascade hops in there. This is a non-traditional hop for a fest beer, but uh, that's very important to the character of Sierra Nevada. So, so we have some Cascade in there. We've got some, uh, I would say, traditional German noble uh, hop varieties in it, which are very traditional. But then, uh, for a little uh, 
Kerviter yep. flair, maybe. We have some Ariana, uh, which is, I don't know, a, a more recent uh, uh, interesting yeah. aroma up from Germany that uh, gives a nice somewhere between yeah. citrus and, and berry uh, character. So, uh, but it's, so, yeah, but it's like, not really a like hot bar. These, How would you yeah, describe I mean, it? Both, both our beers and breweries strive hub. for perfect balance and drinkability in our beers. So yes, of course, we discussed dry hopping the beer, but it would have been very, I mean, that would have been very different from a traditional Oktoberfest style beer. So we still wanted to have, give a nod to recognize the original beer style, make it hoppy, but not exactly a hop bomb to, to, to over hop it. Um, an Oktoberfest beer, I mean, you really, I mean, if you think about Oktoberfest, you drink these steins and... Well, you start counting after you had five, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a six percent beer, Ollie. So, so you need some drinkability in that thing. Um, uh, it might be kind of challenging if you do that with a hop bomb. There are people out there um, that can do it, I bet. But um, yeah, that was that was the the base idea to, to strike a good balance, get a good hop character in there, which we have in our flagship beers as well. Um, but don't let the base beer style be overpowered from the hops. It should should shine through. You still need that slight sweet biscuity honey like uh, backbone of the fast beer in there to shine through. Yeah, but well, one of the other things we did, Ollie, to create that balance and in a beer that does have malt character, does have some body to it, uh, to enhance that drinkability, is we've got the BUs at about thirty five or so. Uh, which gives it a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, a cleaner finish, I think. Uh, so that's, I don't know, probably 10 at least IBUs higher than a, I, I, I a would, normal I would say if you look at the be. recent Oktoberfest beers at probably at least 15 higher or, yeah, 50 to 18 higher. I guess they're very low on, on, on IBUs. These days, like you said, if you go to the Oktoberfest, they... It's mm-hmm. hardly to do to make a difference visibly and sometimes in drinkability as well from a regular Ellis. Scott, to, mm-hmm. to put a scale on it, can you can you give a rough idea like a Sierra Nevada pale ale, the the amount of cascade hops you might put in that versus the amount of cascade hops you put in this October best? Oh, it's not even close. Uh, pale ale has cascade throughout. Uh, and it's it's right at about a pound per barrel of Cascade only. Uh, and in this beer, uh, it's mostly German hops. There's uh, some Cascade in there, but it's not one of the dominant um, uh, hops. Yep. But it's just it's we have, blended. Uh, it's blended in there with because a lot of I, I like Tetnang a lot because it is is that next relative to Sotzer. Um, which gives that nice, spicy, noble character. But if you add tapping late in the whirlpool or dry hop with it, you also get citrus notes out of the uh, tapping. Um, and then, as Scott mentioned, Ariana gives you that nice uh, Warren fruitiness um, from a German hop variety. And I think uh, the, the major hops in the whirlpool were uh, tapping and uh, Ariana, if I remember correctly. Uh, no, there's Harrisburger in the hot pack, and as well as in the yeah, uh, yeah. mid boil. So you said right. no, no dry hopping. Is that correct? Yep, and, that's right. And and Scott, I'd be amiss if I didn't ask about the yeast. <laughs> the yeast, yes, yeah. The yeast is uh, the, uh, a classic. It's uh, Vine Stefan's thirty four seventy. It's. Uh, very, very widely used all over the world in lager brewing. And how does this differ from Summerfest? Oh, well, Summerfest uh, is uh, paler in color. It's just pale pilsner and a little bit of Munich malt. Uh, there's no Munich malt in, uh, in our collaboration beer at all. Uh, Summerfest is, uh, oh, it, it's really strictly... Uh, German noble type hops. There are no yeah. Cascades. There are is no Ariana, uh, and uh, the ABV, of course, is is quite a bit lower. So this is kind of a uh, 
just spicier Oktoberfest than maybe what we've been used to uh, from the Germany. I know I've, I've picked up some Warsteiner Oktoberfest, and and the hops are kind of barely there, very drinkable. But this is <laughs> this is far more remin- reminiscent of uh, kind of a, a German uh, uh, Sierra Nevada hybrid. It seems like. Well, I would certainly hope exactly, so. Exactly, and that, I mean, that was the target. Um, <laughs> of course, there are others out there that totally overdo it. But again, I think it's that what um, really is key to both our breweries, um, having balance uh, in the beers. And um, yeah, I think this is this is exactly where we wanted to have it. Well, gentlemen, this is awesome. It is a delicious beer. Uh, it is a little early in the morning for me to pound too many of, much of it down, but... Uh, I do appreciate it. And Ollie, I've got to ask the question. So this is a collab, you know, can, I don't even know if Sierra Nevada's d- distributed in Germany. Are, are you, are you ha. able to get these well, that's, fabulous that's, looking that's a cans? a very good question because, um, I can answer that with, with yes and no. So officially, um, the, uh, beer style name, Oktoberfest beer, is trademarked in Europe um, to the Munich breweries. So in, in order to uh, distribute or sell an Oktoberfest beer, it has to be brewed in Munich with Munich water by a Munich brewery. Um, if, you, if anybody else would do it, uh, you will very soon get uh, uh, mail from uh, lawyers, from the uh, trademark lawyers. Um, so that'll be a problem. So, but on the other hand, Yes, the beer will be in small amounts in Germany. Um, there will be an Oktoberfest release uh, with a Sierra Nevada tap take over on the 14th of October in Hamburg and hopefully in some other c- cities as well. Uh, however, that beer will have another name. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, is, it is, that is totally open. So, um, yeah, we probably have to take like markets and cross out the October um, on the can and everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. Scott, are you going Absolutely. over there for yes. that? Oh, I don't know. For sure. We'll see. We'll see. Twist, twist his arm, Ollie. <laughs> but on the other hand, Ollie, maybe it's a little bit interesting to talk about. Uh, Doug, you, you hinted at it earlier. There are uh, plenty of German breweries who are not in Munich who can make Oktoberfest for export, yeah. but they can't sell it as that in Germany. I did not realize that. Okay. So not locally, but but they can distribute it. Out, out, out oh, of wow. Europe, that's, as far as that's I understand. That's cool. I think it's it's trademarked all over Europe. Yeah. Europe. It's, it's, it's one of these, uh, uh, what do you call that, original trademarks like Champagne or so, um, that's at least in Europe also trademarked to... Right these sparkling wines coming out of the champagne. Yeah, it's, it's just interesting to note, uh, for me anyway, that uh, there are plenty of uh, Oktoberfest-type celebrations throughout Germany. They don't uh, necessarily call it Oktoberfest. And the beers are brewed all over everywhere. And uh, you could say they are Oktoberfest-type beers, but normally they are called fest beers for something yeah. like a Volksfest or uh, something like this all over uh, Germany. So Munich has the, the trademark on Oktoberfest, but that doesn't mean it doesn't the happen everywhere else actually under the different Oktoberfest names. Beer. <laughs> so we have an Oktoberfest in Hamburg at a large venue, not, not, not the one that we are going to celebrate. There's a large one with all that Bavarian gimmicks around it in northern Germany. Um... Of all places, yeah, yeah. you know, um, and they have they have Oktoberfest beer from Bavaria brought in, um, probably other beers as well, fest beers. So the celebration, the party can be called Oktoberfest. That's not trademarked, but Oktoberfest beer, that is trademarked. So, Ali, clearly I can see uh, Scott's influence on this beer. And I see the personal connection. I understand you and Scott, Ken Grossman, go well back there. What would you say to you personally? What was the most important thing that you brought? Well, on both ends, I mean, we uh, some of the uh, malt bill uh, is linked to 
uh, prototype, which is, uh, as I said, our, our flagship, our la flagship lager. Um, and also the hops are um, the, the Technang hops and Ariana um, come from prototype. On, on, the, on the main malt bill, it would have been too difficult to use the main malt that we're using, which is the Bohemian floor malt from uh, Weimann on, our, on, on prototype, just for the large amounts to get it over there. Uh, but we added uh, some of the uh, carapils as well, which is not typical for pale ale. Um, so that adds the mouth feel and some of the body so to know. the fast beer. So that's that's on the malt and, and yeah, and then the hops and the W thirty four seventy. I mean, it's a, it's it's a it's the top yeast for lagers, and yes, we're using it as well on on protein. I believe that's the most widely used. Lager I think so in, as well because uh, it's on world. one hand very neutral ferments pretty well, and for lager yeast is pretty reliable, uh, low on diester. Yeah, it's a great yeast. Well, I know both of you gentlemen are super busy. I know Ollie. I think you're trying to get out of town to go on a little vacation. Scott, I think your next two weeks are anything <laughs> but a vacation because you're getting ready for the fall season and celebration ale. Can you describe what's coming up? Oh, well, you know, as we get into fall here, um, you know, uh, we have really busy production times at the brewery uh, leading into summer uh, and through summer like everybody else. But fall is a really big time for us as we uh, get into celebration ale brewing. Uh, we won't really get a break until, I don't know, <laughs> January <laughs> or so. <laughs> well, that's some delicious beer. Yeah. And I just for perspective, last thing, uh, when did you start working on this Oktoberfest? I mean, this we're we're seeing it on the shelves in the past few weeks, but this is not a quick brew, is it? Start. It went back to November, I guess. That's when we started talking about it. And remind me, you brewed yeah. the first test batch yeah. in January, right? Oh, I think so. I can look it up here in a minute, I guess. But, uh, I mean, that's about right. I think we ended up with uh, three or four versions. Four, yeah. I'd say maybe four uh, before we uh, we had it uh, yeah, completely exactly. nailed down. Um, and then, of course, um, end of April, there was the uh, Springtoberfest at Sierra Nevada Brewery. Uh, the right. inofficial pre-release yeah. happens. That's where we showed or displayed the port, the first uh, final recipe batch. And that's where we went, uh, went yeah, over, spent right. some time um, at Sierra. And um, yeah, well, everybody marks down the, what's that, 30th of September and the, what is that? Uh, well, of course, 7th of October. Um, if you happen to be around the area of Chico, there's going to be the Oktoberfest um, with, well, the big party. I'm going to be there as well. Are you really? Great. <laughs> well, this has been super. I know you both have super busy schedules. I will let you go. Ollie, I hope, hope you have a wonderful yeah. vacation. Scott, try and survive the next few weeks. That we You brew some delicious stuff. And uh, this, I know you both are proud papas. This is one delicious beer. Thank you, I so have thoroughly enjoyed glad. it. So, cheers, cheers. gentlemen. Thanks, Doug. See you, soon. See you soon, Ollie.